How how Matt gonna say he with doing a podcast but he ain't on the pod? You know what? Yeah, that slander we will accept. We will accept all type of slander in <laughs> relations to that. Absolutely. Verbal of course you will. and text. So you know if you want to spend spend some of that in the group too. Marvelous. So look, look, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to start this off. This is the Daily Heat Check Smokecast, episode 13. Please talk to 14, me, people. 14. 14? 14. 14. Yes, it is. We had 13, yes, not yesterday, the day before yesterday, with uh, uh, Trinidad. Oh, yes, we did. You should, all right, I'm not sure. I think you're lying to me. I'm going to have to go back nah, and recap and count. 12, 12 was with... Uh, all right, we'll uh, debate that later. Priority. But, but peep game. We're here. We're live and direct. This is me, your host, Sir Piffery Goods, and we have a special guest today. We're going to save him for last. Please introduce yourself, Mr. King Jones. Talk to the people. Tell them where they can find you. Hey, it's your man. It's King Jones, man. You can find me on Twitter, at King Jones underscore forever. Uh, you know, we're here. we out here. We're about to do this episode again. Give y'all some fire for the night. All right, and like I said, I am Piff Beats. You can find me at Piff Beats on Twitter and at Instagram and at YouTube all over. Google us, Daily Heat Check. You know the drill. But today we have a special guest, and he goes by the name of Mr. Sam Davis. Please, sir, introduce yourself to the people. Tell them where they can find you. Hey, good people. What's going on? My name is Sam Davis. I want to thank everybody for coming in. I'm very glad to be here. You can find me on Instagram at, at the real Sam Davis. That's Sam with two M's. So that's S A M M Davis, the real Sam Davis on Instagram. That's where you can m- mostly find me. You can find me on my website too, samdavis.com. I got a blog out. Um, I got a podcast out myself. I'm a mod. I'm a model. I act, and I'm a screenwriter. You can catch me, and she's got to have it on Netflix right now in episode one. And um, yeah, man, I'm just here. I'm glad to be here. I'm glad to you know down and talk with y'all about about some interesting things tonight man so i'm excited man no absolutely so you know we're gonna start the shit off like this um basically you're the special guest of the host um for the show and we want to just dive in like you know with a formal interview get to know a little bit more about mr sam davis right now um this is the daily heat check smoke cash you know we want to know some of the becomings you're the 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 screenwriter the model the podcaster a man of many hats you're um on netflix right now live people go tune in and watch that listen to the podcast as well so um Tell us how did how did Sam Davis become Sam Davis? Where did it start? Was it with the um the screenwriter? Or was it with the modeling? Or did just did both the um realms end up crossing roads at one point? Um, all right, that's a good question. To be honest with you, I had a couple different names coming up because I actually came up doing all of those things except for modeling. I never considered myself a model. I never considered myself um somebody who was into that type of world or into that type of thing. I actually was more into rapping, performing, um, you know, writing writing scripts. I wrote my first script at nine years old, so I, I can't really say that I haven't been writing and into acting and into screenwriting as long as I have rapping, because I was. It's just that rap was just so much more captivating and was such a such a um, propellant for me as a person, you know what I'm saying, to just mm-hmm. put me in the world and put me in a space where I was accepted. You know what I'm saying? So um, the name Sam Davis, that came about uh, probably 2013, 2012, something like that. And that really came about because, um, or no, sorry, it 
might have been 2014, some some around that time. But the name really came about because at, at the time I was going by Smooth S M U V E, and we all know that that's a very generic name. Well, I mean, everybody knows the Smooth in their hood. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't something that I really saw myself growing with, and I knew that I was growing as a person. So for me, it was important to find something that I identify with that that symbolized my growth and also would not stunt my growth in any way. And when I looked at, you know, thought about different names and I thought about different things that inspired me, one of the things I found interesting was how many rappers um, and hip-hop personas have, have used Frank Sinatra in the past as, you know, as a name for themselves or, or as an identification of who they are. And nobody ever really identified Sammy Davis Jr. And I always felt he was one of the most talented mm. people in the rap pack. Facts. So me just being a fan of, of classy performances, um, timeless performances, um, elegance, benevolence, uh, just, you know, just being captivated by that and by, by Sammy Davis Jr. and all his different talents and all his different hats that he wore. It really just, it was a perfect fit. It was a way for me to pay homage to somebody who I really appreciated and who inspired me in my life. Um, and it was also a way of me expressing how much we are similar like even down to the fact that i'm indian and portuguese by by nature and because of that you know um i've had to face certain adversities in in this in this entertainment business that has been a little different than uh what a white entertainer might go through because me being a brown person i'm kind of in between so i kind of I kind of could get flack from either side of the coin. You know what I'm saying? White or black could throw shade at me at any given time mm-hmm. for something because I'm not this and I'm not that because I'm right in the middle. So, you know what I'm saying? It was important for me, like, just to figure myself out and to, and to figure out exactly what it is that I wanted to do. And Sammy Davis Jr. also had to face those adversities as a performer, as being a black performer in front of mostly white audiences and also being Jewish. You know what I'm saying? Like, he, he, he again changed the perception and went against the mold and set the bar higher um, and said, I'm not going to live within the limitations of which y'all telling me, because as a black man, y'all telling me that I can never be Jewish. But in my heart, I feel Jewish, so I became Jewish. I married a white woman. You know what I'm saying? Like, the things things that he did to me was just like, you know, if if that's what he wanted to do, that's what he was going to do, and I respected that, and I feel the same way about myself, so a lot of talking right now but that's you know that's pretty much how the name sam davis came about you know what i mean no, nah, absolutely not. This is this is where you get it out, man. The smoke cast. Um, you know, when we do these interviews, this is what we want. We like we like engagement. We like storytelling. We like when you um, you know, we give you the stage and you go in. So now with that, you give me a platform to ask even more questions to build on the interview. This is something uh, you know, as far as with the interviewing, is one of my hidden skills that I try to you know showcase on the cast. Um, but as far as um. Good, good interviews, not to cut you off, but good interviews always depend on not just the interviewer, but also the person being interviewed. I mean, you know, I, I, I've experienced that where I sat down with people from my own podcast, and it's like, if you're going to come with a closed mentality or if you're going to come kind of closed off to the situation, it's just not going to work no matter how good I am and no matter how many great Facts. questions I ask you. Facts. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's just not going to, the cohesiveness ain't going to be there, so. You know, definitely, I definitely understand that. Right? No, absolutely. Word. Um, so, um, with that, I got I got a few questions, and um, you know, we're gonna ball this into music and try to bring it back all full circle. Now, right. you said hip hop, you use that as um, you know, a uh, 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 platform. You know, um, so how what what drew you into hip hop? Who was your favorite artist, or what was the song that made hip hop? <laughs> you know, like yo, this is this is my thing. And then with that. With the Sammy Davis, you know, you, you you enlightened me with some of the facts that you were just dropping now. I have no shame in saying that. So with that, were you even a fan of the Rat Pack and what drew you to their music? Or, or, or I know Sammy Davis, of course, but I'm saying to the actual, that era, that sound, because I feel like that was more like a, not a doo-wop, but, um, you know, that when, when, when Frank Sinatra did it, it was so different. It was crooning. Yeah, it was definitely crooning music. Um, you know, uh, moonlight, moonlight music. But um, no, I always enjoyed that music. I I I got an old soul, so I came up on Motown. Actually, in my household, there was a lot of Motowns. Marvin Gaye was 
it was Michael Jackson, it was the Temptations, it was it was a lot of different things like that. But when it came to the Rat Pack, that was something I discovered later on as I was going through artist development with myself. Not nobody was telling me to do this, but I was looking to get greater with my stage performances. And in doing so, I would watch a lot of Do we lose Mr. Davis? Yeah, he muted. Uh, his mic is muted. Do we have to start a GoFundMe for Mr. Davis's um, connection? Guests are not, um, you know, exclusive. No, his mic is muted. I think his mic is muted. Yo, Sam, I think your mic yeah, muted. Yeah, I'm right here. My bad, can y'all hear me? Yeah, yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, we can hear you now. Your mic is muted, oh, man. Yeah, 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 my bad. Um, so, yeah, so like I was saying, uh, you know, so I, I, I'm, I'm an old soul, so I came up with all of that. And as, as I was learning my stage show and just wanting to perfect my stage show, um, it was important for me to get that correct. So I would watch a lot of their shows. And them, I would watch a lot of Rat Pack shows, and I would watch a lot of Marvin Gaye shows because it was just something special about what the two, what, what the two of those uh, – performances brought to the table and what they what they meant to me so Marvin Gaye was always like one of my top favorite singers of all time and then Sammy Davis Jr. is just my top entertainer of all time because he did everything so mm. Mm. you know what I mean no, absolutely absolutely so. but oh uh, but, but but back to your original question about hip-hop I mean hip-hop has played such an intricate part of my life without hip-hop friends I would have never I would have never been able to get through my early childhood and, and my teenage years, um, hip hop saved my life, man. You know what I'm saying? Because it's been in my life since I was a, a small child. My sister is five years older than me, so she was in the hip hop, and that's what got me in the hip hop. So I was, mm. I was listening to. I came up in the '90s, so you know I was born in '89. So everything from the early '90s as early as '94, '95 is what I can honestly tell you I remember. Now I know music beyond '95. I know music from the early '90s, even the '80s. Um, but when it comes to what I really grew up on, I grew up. I came up around '95, '96, '97. So you talking about some of the greatest hip hop to ever, ever, ever exist on the planet of this earth? We talking about pop. We talking about early ho. We talking about Nas. You know what I'm saying? We're talking about Wu-Tang, uh, Busta Rhymes. We're talking about Eminem in his early stages. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, I've seen so much great shit happen in hip-hop since I've been a child. So, you know, hip-hop was a way for me to express myself at a time where everybody was pointing the finger and laughing and joking and being like, yo, you know, you Indian, what you know about this culture? And it was like, what I don't know about this culture. I, I live this culture, whether I, whether y'all know that or not. Number one, because y'all outcast me, I feel like an outcast, and that's the first thing it's built on. It's built on, be, on, on outcast. You know what I'm saying? It's mm. built on being that. It's built on being renegades and rebels and saying, fuck what society talking about. This is us. And even though they don't want this, even though we don't meet the status quo, we're going to say, fuck that, and we're going to make this the status quo, and y'all going to rock with this. I had to do that. I had to adopt that mentality as a child because that was the only way that I was going to be able to stand up to the bullies in my neighborhood. You know what I'm saying? If I didn't do that, I wouldn't have known that. And then when we're talking about struggling and, and we're talking about roaches in the crib and this and that, I had all of that. See, you know, listening to these raps and identifying and relating with them, that's all I was doing. That's what attracted me to it and I went through different phases I tried to listen to different music I tried to listen to rock I tried to listen to alternative rock and all that kind of shit I was like yo at the end of the day I don't really relate they want to shoot the school up I don't want to do that shit mm. that's not what I'm trying to do you feel me <laughs> I'm Absolutely. not trying to shoot the school up you know what I'm saying I might be trying to get my hustle on and sell a, sell a few things but I ain't trying to shoot the school up so that ain't my type of music and I'm not trying to say all rock music is like that but I'm just saying though they're about these kids shooting schools up. They never listen to hip hop when they're doing it. I'm telling you that right now. Because mm -hmm. that ain't something that we promoting. So, like, you know what I mean? So, I came up on all of that. I came, my, my, 
my shit was Biggie. Biggie was my favorite rapper of all time. He's still my favorite rapper. I knew every big verse. I, you know what I mean? I just love Biggie. Biggie was just my first tape was Biggie. More money, more problems. The 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 single on tape. You know what I'm saying? Like I remember all of this shit. You know what I'm saying? So I remember when Pop died. Like I was in my house. My sister was. We we had the, the little 13 channel TV. Um, with the knob, you know what I'm saying, to turn the channels, we had that shit, so, you you know, we, we was watching Pots, Eulogy and all that shit happening right there on the motherfucking TV, like, you know what I'm saying, and just being, like, dumbfounded by where the fuck that shit left us, you know what I mean, like, it, we knew that shit was, was gonna change forever when they died, you know what I'm saying, like, we knew that, like, it, we felt that, and I can't never describe that, and I don't think we'll ever feel that again, Unless maybe Jay, you know, God forbid, but when Jay passed, you know what I'm saying, or something like that, we might feel that way. But I don't think we would because Jay got to live a fulfilled life. And I think that that's a great conversation to be had. Like, will the day that Jay-Z passes, will they have the same impact as the day when Biggie passed and when Pop passed? You know what I'm saying? True, true. Oh, absolutely. Because Big Pop was taken at such a young age. And they would, they were still, they still had so much to do. Whereas we've seen Hove accomplish everything. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I'm sure he still has shit to accomplish. But you know, if he passed tomorrow, we wouldn't be like, oh, it was too soon. You know what I'm saying? Like we would be mm-hmm. like, yo, I mean, we would still say it's too soon, but it wouldn't be the same as like Biggie. You know, who only got to put out two albums. You know what I'm saying? True. True. Like, it, it, it ain't the same thing, but. I don't know. I don't know if it had the same impact. I don't know. I don't think Jay Z is ever going to get murdered. God forbid. Nah. You know I what I'm saying? God forbid. But I don't yeah, think, Lord forbid. Not going to win that. Oh, absolutely. You know what I'm saying? I think but, that he's going. He, if, if, if he passes, it's going to be from old age and just natural causes at this point in his life. You know what I'm saying? God willing. Facts. And, you know, whatever. From that day will come, and I don't know if, if we will have if it will have the same impact. Cause we even look like even Michael Jackson, that shit kind of just happened. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like we ain't expect Michael Jackson to die when Michael Jackson died, and I think that that Prince too. You know what I'm saying? Like we ain't expect for these people to just die when they did, and it left such a huge impact. Prodigy, Aaliyah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's all facts. But, Joe, give me a second. I got to go take care of little mama. She crying. I'll be right back. I'm going to take over this motherfucker for a second, man. This piff want to go handle father duties. I'm about to be a father soon. Hey, yo, who on this motherfucker, man? You got King Jones and Mac, Mac Amazing just joined in this motherfucker. Mac, yo, talk to the people. On, let, them know, let them know where they can find you, Mac. You know how we do this. Yeah, man, y'all know the shit, bro. VSF underscore MAC at Twitter. Holla at me, yeah. All right, man. We were sitting here talking to Sammy real quick. You know, he was giving us a little bit of insight of his uh his passion of a songwriter. You know what I mean? Beat maker, things like that. You know what I mean? He's telling Yo, us so how what he came what about think, it. What y'all think about that, though? Like, y'all think, y'all think that that's true? You think that they hold passes is going to have the same impact as when... Y'all remember when Big when Big we'll, we'll have like, that we'll have that impact, but it won't be like it won't be the same as 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 Big and Pop. Only reason why is because Hole is now in his fifties. You feel me? Yo, so, you want to hear, hear some real shit? I'm gonna be so honest with you, yo. I didn't understand why people were going so crazy over the reason why Big died and the reason why Pop died died i mean e- even reason why michael jackson died i understand like i understand that they were iconic and whatnot and i can't even say big was iconic but even even pop pop was i i i, I guess i'm not the type of person that go crazy over when people die because it is what it is at the end of the day I, I don't knock the next person for how they feel but i i didn't see what the big deal was and like dude i remember the shit like it was yesterday i was looking out my i was I was in my living room watching TV and some dude walking out my street literally broke somebody's window just because Pop died. And I'm like, yo, are you are you serious? Right, you so vandalize somebody else's shit. Because I'm gonna break it down for you. Right, no, I understand why. I just don't get it. 
I un- trust me, I understand why. I just don't get why. You know what I mean? Uh, well, I guess it's not for me to understand. Well, yeah. all right. What did I say? Like your statement of that, Biggie was definitely iconic. TG is back. Where's the music? We got to cue the music. TG is back. TG is here. Yo. Yo. TG is Yo, TG. here. TG, what up, my boy? Where is the music? We got to have the music. Good, man. Ba, ba, da, da, ba, da, da. The return oh, you just of the Wild King. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, what's good, fellas, man? What's going no, no. on? Yo, <laughs> we was, hey, we was just discussing if when Jay Z passed, would be <laughs> as impactful as when Big or Pac died. Damn, I mean, it would, it would. Yeah, it, it might it be, would. it might be bigger only because, you know, he might, you know, just pass of old age, and it'll be, it won't be a tragedy. You know, it'll be more will of. Will that a, make it? Will that make it bigger, or will that take away <clears throat> from from it being as impactful? See, you got a good point there, cause it it might be bigger, but it might not be as impactful. Like you know, yeah, now that you say it that way, it it definitely won't be as impactful because probably by the time he passed, shit, we gonna be old. Right. Yeah. Right. So shit, my son ain't gonna know who Jay Z is. He just gonna know when he hear me bumping some old blueprint. Like, oh, oh, what's that? Oh, you don't yeah, know nothing about this, man. Go sit down. Yo, to, to, to the future, Jay-Z gonna be Quincy Jones. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, he gonna be a Barry Gordy. So, like, his, uh, his legacy will live on, but uh, I don't know, man. Who knows, the day, we all die one day, bro. I mean, so some of us, but I'll tell you one thing. People will know who he is at the end of the day. His, his, his legacy will live on. Yeah, um, yeah, I can't. Yeah. I can't say that much about Big. I um, mean, only reason why Big legacy lived on. I feel like it's a conspiracy why his legacy lived on, though, because if for some odd reason. No, you really, you really got to think against Biggie, though. I peep that. What happened? <laughs> I don't think he got to think against saying. Biggie. I think he just, you know, what I mean. He, Mac is the conspiracy man of the of the group. He no, like dude, don't get the fucked up. Like, nah, you really gotta Big is it. dope. You gotta have a thing against Biggie. Yo, son, nah, nah, real shit, son. Let's 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 honestly think about this shit, son. The the the, the same the same reason, the same way how they look at Big and Big only put out two full albums and they were okay albums. They weren't the dopest albums in the fucking world. Let's just be honest. They were, and though. everybody and everybody and everybody in the music industry said, "Oh, he's the greatest rapper that, that ever did it." For that time, cut yeah. it the fuck out. For that time, you know? no. You gotta think about the time frame. Nah, cut it the frame? fuck out, bro. Nah, man. Nah, bro. Right, and I had an argument with anybody. Time, okay, for I mean, time, for that time frame, anybody. That time and I will, I will debate to the T. Okay, debate this. Like, nah. And, frame, and, and, and and Big has some dope ass verses. Exactly, so Big was dope. Frame, Don't get it fucked up. For that time frame. Who was a better rapper than Biggie and Tupac for that time frame where they both passed at a young age? Who was a, who was a better rapper at that time frame? Uh, you know what? Passed? Let me put you it to you know, like this. The okay. Better okay. Rapper, the better rapper was Big. No, no I ain't saying between Big and who? Pac. I'm saying Big and Pac died. Between Big and Pac? At, no, you can't compare them to. No, no, no. Listen, listen to what I'm saying. I'm not comparing them to. What I'm saying is they died at a young age, right? With them dying at a young age, people said that they was the best rapper. So I say, all right, they was the best rapper for that time frame that they was out. If you could name another rapper yeah. during the time frame that Big and Pac was out before they died, that was better than them two, then you have a debate with saying that, all right, Biggie wasn't the best to ever do it during that time frame that he was out. Dude, I'll take Nas over Big at that time. It depends on who you asking. Nah. Oh never, shit! I never what Nas just Nas happened? I just you came fucking. back to a full motherfucking podcast. I'll yes, take Nas over Big. I got a real shit. Real shit. I'll take Meth over Big at that time. But see, that's what, what I mean. It's subjective. Marketing them, yo. If Big was at anybody else besides Puff, Big wouldn't be nowhere. Let's be honest. Let's keep it real. Hey man, come on. That's like saying if if Method Man was if, if wasn't with RZA, he wouldn't be nowhere. Come on, like who? That, you gotta get closer to the mic, Sam. Gotta get closer to the mic. I can hear you, King. 
that that's not a good argument. You know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, that's like saying that that's like saying that Suge wouldn't have signed Big if Big wasn't with Diddy. Then what? Big uh, Big would have got signed by Suge if, if he didn't get signed by Diddy. <laughs> I believe that for cold heartedly. Big had the Suge Big had it. Suge wanted to sign every go body. they go hand in hand, man. Biggie and Puff. It's just it's just what it is. It's like Brady and Belichick. Yeah, true. true. You just can't, true. you know, they, they came. It's just how it was, man. True. But everybody, you know, when Biggie right. was so out, you know, I, shit, I was too young. I, I wouldn't even know. But I just felt like growing up, his verses was ahead of their time. Like, I don't know. You know, it might not be as far as lyrics and punchlines. I mean, he was saying stuff I feel like. You know, like <laughs> he was years ahead of his time with with some lines. That's that's what I just feel like. But you know, everybody is entitled to their own opinion. Everybody views music differently. So you know, I feel like some people want to just hear somebody spitting, bragging about what they're doing, and just saying it in the dopest way. And then some people want to hear substance and want to hear, you know, a song that a song that it might make you cry or make you think. So it's, it's kind of hard to say. You know, you know, it's funny that you say that because I had a debate last night with some gentlemen and we was debating whether bars matter in hits. Do bars matter in hits to y'all? What do you mean, like in a, in a hit record? In a hit record, does do bars matter? Nah. Yeah. No, it really doesn't. That's what I said. But yeah, I mean, has there been a to lot me it of does. great hits? With it really bars? doesn't, dude. But, yo, I'm going to tell you why. It's crazy. But it, ah, I'll tell man. You why. Yo, bar, like, if you go like to a, if you, you go to a club right now, you listen to a nigga spitting bars, it's not gonna make you go back and forth to the bar buying drinks, hopping on ass, bro. No, all right, but all right. So what what we could say is a a hit but, record. Jay Z like a a hit record. When the okay. Remy's in the okay. system, you make so, no tell her what I fuck him all I did some. That's a hit record. That shit had you going okay. back and forth. Hold but, bro, but if you listen to the bar, yo, he was spitting some exactly. shit, though. Exactly. That's, that's <laughs> so I feel that's like that's some that's of them songs is like H to the Izzo. That was commercial, but he was nah, saying nah, a lot of shit. Out of this conversation. Okay, all right, all right. Okay, all right. Uh, conversation because he has bars and knows how to make hits. Yeah, we yeah, all right. Everybody else. All right, who, who, yeah, let's, let's think of some. All right, we talk about Method Man. What's his biggest hit? Hold up. It's, it's, it's Humble, Kendrick Lamar's Humble. Now, if that comes on in the club, you're not rocking to that? No, I'm definitely, yeah. I, I'm rocking to that. This the thing. This the thing. Is, okay, you see, okay it if it you want to say it like that, will you go to the club, listen to Humble without the beat on, and you, and you say that's a banger? What? Come on. <laughs> yeah, but there ain't no, there ain't no acapella I go to the club and think it's a banger. I'm so oh, like, oh, word. Oh, oh, what I'm is that, now you telling me, dude, now you telling me a motherfucker shit gotta be rocking on the acapella. Like, God damn. I'll put it to you like this. You know what? I gotta make it fuck the hot boy song, um, wobbly, 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 drop it like it's hot. A DJ play that as an acapella, niggas will be, bitches will be on the dance floor making a ass clap to that shit as the acapella alone. Why? Because it was a hit for what was said. Oh it no! But nah, I, I seen so. it, bro. I seen DJs do it. Yeah, but that might, but so, 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 they might have did that in New Orleans. I'm talking yeah, about in Jersey. You ain't doing. You ain't I'm doing this. I'm talking, don't talk about going to the skate. When Skate 22 was popping, when Branchwick was popping, niggas would put the put the acapella on. That song would come on. Niggas know. All right. Bitches know okay. Be all, right, all right. All right. But but you could say they could play the acapella to Salt Shaker and bitches might start twerking. Like that don't mean he was saying anything. Like. But it was a hit. It it wasn't. A it word. wasn't. It was not lyrically profound about that shit. I, yeah, I mean, exactly. you can't debate with me, bro. No, you but can't what, debate that with me. Yeah, but what you're you're saying that people listen to wobbly wobbly because cause it was a hit no matter what. Just shit was balling. Not a fact. We fly yeah. high, no lie. Balling. That's real lyrically profound. No, but, that shit in the club. 
Yeah. It, I mean, it is a hot song. My point exactly. It was nothing lyrical about that. It was a hit track. Nah, he was talking some shit on there. Nah, he was talking some shit on there. I'm still, I'm lost. I'm trying to figure out. So you're saying if if it's a if it's a dope song that you could play acapella when it comes to a hit, bro. Bars don't matter when it comes to a hit. We all agree on that. We said that. Wait, bars do not matter. It's more on the beat, but then bars are a plus. Cause you gotta yes. understand, cause when you're yes. spitting that, some okay. shit, yes. that's a bonus. Like damn, it's a bonus. You feel me? If you extra but commercial, you but you, but you dropping lines, you know, yeah. It's but, just, it all depends, but then it all depends on what artist it is. Cause at the end of the day, let's think about it. Every Nas hit, it, it never was really a clinger. You're bugging. You're bugging. How dare you speak disrespectful of the goat? I'm, I'm a Nas fan, bro. <laughs> Tell me a Nas. No, you're not. Not, not talking like that. A uh, Nas, uh, Nas hit that what? Say it again, man. Every uh, Nas, Nas banging in every uh, era. Nas, that, Nas, uh, Nas banging in every era. Go on the dance floor and pop they ass to, dude. Pop they ass? He don't That's have to hit. have a shit that you have to pop your dude, ass to, man. Just because you do Your definition of a hit, hit is a universal. Hit. Anybody popping their ass to that? You get what I'm saying? I'm talking about, I'm talking, dude, a, 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 a banger. I'm talking about a hit Bitches that Bitches ain't even popping their ass to humble. Okay. That ain't even that okay. type of beat to pop your ass well, to. Well, I remember going to teen night. The only shit they was bumping was Uchi Wally. And bitches used to be dancing to that shit. You used to get mad me? rides Bro, to Uchi Wally. Okay, I say name five oh, yeah. songs that Nas had like that. But, he's, but he doesn't make songs like that. Yeah, he don't. And that's a My point is that, that's, Bro? that's what... That's what I just no, said. No, no. I said but nah, said wait, that. Nas do though. Life is good, but he he doesn't like, make stop it. That shit bang. He don't make the good. um the dance club songs, but okay. you feel me? But when wait, the title track. track. Wait, the title track produced by Swiss no, Beats. Wasn't a that shit's song, a banger. Bro. Listen, man, that shit had a video. Wait, Virgo and Ludacris? That shit was a banger? That don't make it commercial. That was a timeless banger, though. That ain't something I'm going back to. Which one? No, I always, I assume, if it, if you making a... Pop by Pop by Dead Press had a freaking video. It was consistently played. I don't make it, it was a hit single. Oh, I didn't say it was hit. I just said it was commercial. All right, all right. It wasn't even commercial. Yo, so let's wrap this up. We'll... What we saying about this 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 particular topic? Do bars matter or nah? My not, not, bro. not for his song, nah. Dude, the, South, the South proved that to you. The, I'm talking They've been about for years. Do bars matter? Nah. Nah. Yeah. All right, we moving on then. Yep. Not <laughs> said on that because we gonna go on and on for days about that bullshit. For real. Right. Bro, this is this is what we do on the smoke ass though. We, we yeah, never know, leave that that with no problem. The smoke on, on no more. Like we gotta let that. <laughs> and wait, T yeah. T G T G jumped on the motherfucking cast. Oh man, we got some we got some shit, man. Yeah, we got some gotta shit. Go, right, man, we gotta take go to over the We gotta go to the new. Well, I turn into the Sam Davis style podcast. <laughs> the bonus content's appreciated. Little mama went crazy, so you know I had to handle that. But, oh, I'm about to be a father. You know oh, congratulations, congratulations, man. Word, wait, man. wait, is this a is this a podcast exclusive? It's a podcast exclusive. Sam Davis about to have a, a son. You know what wow, nice. congrats. Real talk, man. So life is real life is good, man. Yeah, yeah, life is real good. Change your life. Dang, yo. I'm telling you that so, right now. I can't even knock you, sir. I'm going to be right there with you in a second, man. Yeah, you it's a beautiful man? thing, man. It's a we, blessing, listen, man. Listen, we, we all here already. We all right there like that. Mine's asleep, so I'm good with mine. So I, oh, I'm chill. Say that. Yeah, he he about to go take two to the um, you know, however he do it, you know what I mean. It doesn't oh, get. <laughs> Listen, why you gotta bring up old shit, dog? We addressed that in the last pod. It's it's yeah, all good. Wait, we got some notes from the last pod too that I want TG to get get his insight on, man. So wait, we still got our special guest, Mr. Sam Davis. So let's finish up that um that interview, man, right fast with the um real quick. Just tell us um just bring it full circle with you told us about the hip hop. You told us how everything affected you as far as growing up, your influence with the rat pack and as far as with that music. But now tell us as far as with the screen right. How did the screen right come together with the modeling? 
and now you getting placement as far as being on a feature on Netflix and as far as with other works you've done as far as with your film career and then you know with the podcast because because um just to put it like this from everything you told us you being an audiophile makes more sense from the music love the hip hop and you know the rapping and now the podcast so now bring it all together for us right fast all right we're going to do this real short and simple, right? It's God, bro. At the end of the day, it's God. That's that's all it is. Like, I have a purpose in life. I recognize my purpose early in life. I wrote my first script when I was nine years old. I knew who I wanted to star in it. I knew where I wanted to shoot it, places I had never even been. But I knew where I wanted to shoot it. I knew what the soundtrack was going to be for the motherfucker and everything. Like, you know what I'm saying? So... Mm. I, you know, in my mind, like I, I was conceptualizing things very early in life because I didn't, I, I didn't come from a lot. You know what I'm saying? I come from a very humble background, so I had to create and envision everything that I wanted to be and do because I didn't have it. Like I loved wrestling, but I, my parents wasn't buying pay per view. So WrestleMania, I take my wrestlers and I create WrestleMania. You know what I'm saying? In my own in my own bedroom because I can't watch it on TV, you know what I'm saying? Or I'm trying to watch it a little, watching it through the fuzz as it's, you know what I mean? When it's kind of <laughs> fuzzy and shit, you know, you're trying to watch a little bit of it through that and shit. You know? Yeah, so, yeah so I remember that. <laughs> oh, yeah, so ultimately it's just God, bro, you know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, I knew what I wanted to do. I knew when it came to the music and I got into the industry and I got behind the scenes and I really got with some movers and shakers some and some legends. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to uh, Cool Rock Ski from the Fat Boys. Shout out to Smooth from Nice and Smooth. You know what I'm saying? Like these these guys really, um, you know, put me on the game and they really showed me showed me some things. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and a couple other people too. You know what I mean? So so I, I I I learned what I needed to learn as far as that was concerned, and I realized it wasn't where I wanted to be. You know what I mean? And I felt like if I'm gonna act, then I'd rather act. For real. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not going to act as a rapper and portray this image that I'm not. I'm nice. And if I got to put on a fake gimmick to, to sell that, then I'm not doing that. You know what I'm saying? And, and I just... And then, then there was a lot of internal things, you know, between me and the, and the crew that I came up with in this music business. Like, we, we fell apart. So everything just led towards the acting realm. So I just, I just went in that direction. And, you know, the universe put me in front of Spike Lee a bunch of times. And, you know, that just led to me working with him again on She's Gotta Have It, working with him on a couple of commercials, doing some voiceover work for him, um, and then, you know, just continuously staying in contact. And, you know, that's my man. Like, me and Spike really fuck with each other. You know what I'm saying? Like he, Jones, your mic. You know what I mean? Like, he'll, he'll call me, and, you know what I'm saying? We'll, we'll have conversations or whatever. So, like, I really fuck with Spike. Like, he's a really he's a really good mentor for me at this point in my, in my life, and it's such an amazing accomplishment for me because I grew up on Spike Films. So for me to be able to have him as a mentor and have him as somebody that recognized me as an up-and-coming great in his business, it, it just means a lot. And it's, it's, it's really my sole motivation because it came at a time where things were just looking so crazy and I didn't know what was going to happen next. And I couldn't believe because I had moved to L.A. and then I moved back to New York, well, back to Jersey, and um, when I did that, I didn't really know what would happen after that point because I had separated from people I had been around for years. So I didn't know what would happen at that point. And, you know, the modeling shit, again, it just it just fell into place. You know what I mean? I, I knew somebody, they, 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 they wanted me to do some shit, and it just led to me just continuing on to do more shit with that. And I like modeling because you go in there for a couple of hours and you get paid good money. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and you just dressing up in fly shit, taking nice pictures, you know what I'm saying? Having a good time. If you're working for the right company, they taking care of everything. They feeding you, you know what I'm saying? It's liquor. It's whatever. You know what I'm saying? You're having a good time, and, and there's nothing wrong with that. So I'm with that. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, Facts. I enjoy the modeling too. <laughs> you did? Yeah, so I enjoy the modeling shit, too. Like, I, I just did a shoot for Sergio Ticini, um a couple of weeks, a couple of weeks back because they relaunching. And um, it feels good, man. You know what I'm saying? It feels good. I got paid. I enjoyed my time with them. We popped a lot of champagne. You know what I'm saying? We got fly. We wore a lot of different outfits. You know what I'm saying? I got a lot of pictures for my portfolio. So it was all good. It was, and, and I got a bunch of outfits to take home. 
I'm rocking one of them right now. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> you know, talk, Plug. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out to Sir Chill. You know what I'm saying? Real talk. Let me, let me, uh, let me, let me put that on real quick. Sir Joe Coutinho, this is soup right here. You know what I'm saying? That I got on. You dig? So, you know, make sure y'all look out for that. Go to SergioTaccini.com, you know what I'm saying, and let them know Slim Davis sent you, you know what I'm saying, and get your track suits on, you know what I mean? So, yeah, so now we just out here, and, and I'm just looking to monetize, and, and, and it's all about value at this point, you know what I'm saying, understanding value and, and bringing value to the table. And, um, you know, that's what it is, man. Jay-Z said it best, that's the price of your life, you know what I mean? Can't, can't complain with that. So, with with that being said, this is the Smoke Cast, and we do have the return of TG, and you do have this connection with Spike. So, we are we gonna be seeing you front row at the Knicks game? Cause we got some we got some New York Knicks talk to go into this um today as well. So um. <laughs> oh shit! Well, you know I'm gonna keep it real with you, man. When that time come, it'll come. You know what I'm saying? I know that I've I've oh, I've been around Spike at least ten, eleven times. And I ain't never been fronted on. He's always co- going out his way to show me love. So, you know what I'm saying? As far as I'm concerned, it's 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 a hundred whether we ever sit down at a Nick game or not, man. That's somebody that I respect and I owe a lot of my career to at the end of the day. So, word. True, true. Well, look, fellas, if you have anything to ask the, um, the good Sir Sam Davis, you know, go right ahead. But if not, we about to jump into the sports section of the, um, the smoke cast. And um, get this joint cracking off early, so you know. Let's get our joint cracking off because TG is here. We have to. Ah, uh, TG. It. Wait, and we have some notes from the last show, TG. I, I want you. I really want you to attack some of these notes from the last show. But we're going. We're going to jump right in. <laughs> nah, because there's some good ones, man. There's some good ones in the I last know. show. You know, it's been. It's been a lot going on since. You know? uh, since later, man. Yeah, it's later, been a long man. time. And Mr. Sam Davis, I hope you're a sports fan. Are you? Wait, do you like the Knicks? Nah, I definitely don't like the Knicks. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know not what? A bad answer. answer. What you missed, Mr. Davis? You know been, that's not a bad never answer. Never been a Knicks fan. That's oh wow! Answer, but I think Spike will never take you to a Knicks game, man. Um, yeah. It's well, all good. Know, He'll still go me. stunt for the gram. Yo, you feel me? Plug. But. But wait, what what is your team though? I hope you're not like a Nets fan or a bitter Knicks fan that went to the Lakers or something. I want the full truth behind this if you are out of town fan. It's a very simple truth. I came up a Jordan fan. Oh. And I kept the uh. Jordan I kept the, Do we I kept do we still the give the Jordan pass, guys? I don't he know. likes the Bulls as long as he still rock he with the Bulls. Bulls. As long as he still rock with them, he good. He I good about our shit. Like to this day, I still rock with the Bulls. Like I'm not. You still rock. Right. So how do you feel about the Portis and the Emeritus fight? Man, listen, man, I don't got nothing to say about none of this shit because I. Ain't <laughs> I'm gonna keep it real with you. I've been busy working. I ain't been keeping up on sports, man. I'm gonna be honest with you. So I'm gonna fall back and let y'all talk. Y'all talk. While I Google some shit. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm about to hit y'all with some stats. You're going to be like, damn, this motherfucker, man. Where to look some shit. Well, like well, you feel me? Jump in. Jump in when you feel like, because you no, know I'm about nah, to break nah, one but, up. You know, but I know that shit is kind of wild, crazy, right? But you know what I'm saying? At, at the end of the day, I also feel like even with sports, things have just become so much of a money grab across the board that it don't even be the same anymore like the the level of competition you know what I'm saying like it just to me like I mean not not to take away from the talent I think there's a lot of talented talents and super talented guys and I think that there's a lot of amazing shit happening but I don't know man I just felt I just felt weird like but I do I do respect it though I do respect players going where they want to go and not and not uh you know being bound to places because you know, the fans or the people who tell them that that's where they need to be. You know what I'm saying? So I do respect it. You know what I mean? It just took some getting used to. But I've been too busy, man. So I'm going to let y'all rock with it. All right. So we all right, all we, right. 
So yeah, you know he 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 busy man. He on Netflix right now, and I and I, I say this to tell y'all to go watch that because we will be watching that, and this is the Smoke Cast. We will be doing a review on that too. So um, we, we, what are we watching? What are we watching? Because I wasn't. I oh oh got, yeah. Oh yeah. What's the name of the um the oh, show you're on oh, on Netflix gotta again? Have it. She's gotta have it. She's gotta on have Netflix. it. You know what I'm saying? It's out right now. All ten episodes are streaming right now. Oh, nice. It's a series. Okay. Yeah, so make sure y'all go check it out. I'm in episode one, and I did a lot of voice work throughout the series or whatever, but definitely episode one, and I'm definitely the Indian cab driver. So when you hear that accent, just know that was me. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man. But yeah. But yeah, man. But I'm on, I'm on my board, I don't know about y'all.